Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. Thus far, in this series of videos, I have given numerous arguments for why death is the greatest threat to human beings, and why eliminating it is extremely desirable. I have also refuted numerous commonly made arguments to the contrary, and I've hinted that it is possible to reverse senescence, to delay senescence, and to live indefinitely, as certain organisms in nature already do, or at least come very close to doing. Now, I'm going to delve a little bit more into the question of feasibility, and try to convince you that it is indeed possible to achieve indefinite human longevity within our own lifetimes. The work that I'm going to be relying on here has been done by Dr. Aubrey de Grey of Cambridge University, who is both an engineer and a biologist. He has a PhD in biology, and he is also quite experienced in terms of computer engineering. And one of the wonderful things about de Grey's approach is that it's not the approach of the conventional scientist, who's primarily focused on theories and research and figuring out essentially how does one understand the status quo and how things work in the status quo. The mind of the engineer is more targeted toward solving problems, figuring out what is wrong here or what needs to be done and how our existing knowledge can be used to solve that. So what Dr. DeGray has done is provide an overarching synthesis of the knowledge that exists up to our time about the causes of human senescence and biological decay. And what Dr. DeGray has found is very encouraging. There are seven basic causes of damage that accumulate in the human organism as a result of senescence. All of these seven causes have been known for at least 26 years. Now, what this means is that there probably aren't any others. Because during the past 26 years, biotechnology and our understanding of human biology has made magnificent strides. And we have now so much computing power and far superior analytical techniques than we had in the early 1980s to understand exactly how the human organism works. So it's unlikely that any new causes are going to be discovered. So the seven primary causes that Dr. DeGray depicts, I will be discussing briefly here. I can only provide a sketch, but if you want more specific details, I encourage you to look at Dr. DeGray's article, The Quest for Indefinite Life 2, which I have linked in the references section accompanying this presentation. So the first cause was first pointed out in 1955, and it is cell loss or cell atrophy. And essentially, some cells deplete faster than they are created. This is especially true in the heart and in the brain and in muscles as the human organism senesces. And what can be done to fix this is, first of all, somehow inducing cells to divide more frequently naturally, or introducing growth factors into cells to increase the rate of growth and division, and also through stem cell therapy, which introduces entirely new cells into the organism, which can divide and grow even if the existing cells don't uh, grow and replicate as fast as they are destroyed. The second cause is nuclear mutations of nuclear DNA, and the primary problem in that realm is cancer, because cancer is an extremely dangerous threat. If one cell in the whole body achieves a cancerous mutation, that could kill you. Many other kinds of mutations, such as mutations that suppress certain cell functions, they don't necessarily take over the entire body. A few cells might get them, but the other cells will function just fine. But a cancerous mutation has the ability to destroy the entire body, so it is by far the greatest threat. If you cure cancer, you, by and large, resolve that particular problem. 
Then there's the problem of mitochondrial mutations, first uh, pointed out in 1972. Now, mitochondria are cell organelles. They perform the function of cell respiration. They're essential for the cell to be able to utilize any kind of energy. And the mitochondria have their own DNA. If something goes wrong with that DNA, such as a mutation, the mitochondria will not be able to perform cell respiration properly, and the cells, of course, will not be able to get the energy that they require to function. So that needs to be fixed. In 1965, the fourth cause was discovered, which is cell senescence. Some kinds of cells, especially in cartilage and joints, accumulate over time, and these cells are often very toxic, and they produce an excess of certain kinds of proteins, which impairs bodily functions. Also in this category are fat cells, uh, especially visceral fat cells within the abdominal cavity. So a technique needs to be discovered to go into these places and essentially obliterate these dangerous cells. The fifth cause is extracellular crosslinks. Essentially, proteins that are outside of the cells and exist outside of the cells for a very long time are susceptible to chemical reactions with one another. And these chemical reactions are very often unaddressed by the body's natural mechanisms, and these uh, reactions distort the functionality of the proteins. Uh, one big consequence of this is the rigidification of artery walls, which causes a lot of heart problems for people later in life. This problem was first pointed out in 1981, so it's one of the latest of the seven primary causes of decay through senescence. The sixth cause was identified the earliest in 1907 by Dr. Alois Alzheimer, the person who discovered Alzheimer's disease, and essentially stuff outside of cells accumulates that has no useful biochemical functions and indeed impairs many biochemical functions. A uh, prime example of this are the amyloid plaques that occur in the brain and are the primary cause of Alzheimer's disease, which afflicts over half of the people over age 85. So if we can get rid of that, that would significantly extend uh, the human lifespan, especially for older people. Now, intracellular junk is the last of these seven causes. It was first pointed out in 1959, and this junk accumulates as a result of cells breaking down a lot of molecules of certain types, and the cell machinery to break down these molecules is fairly versatile, but there are many kinds of compounds that it simply can't deal with, and these compounds just accumulate over time. Now, for cells that divide very frequently, this isn't as much of a problem, because as the cells divide, the junk gets distributed among these cells, it gets diluted. But there are many cells that don't divide as rapidly, and so for them the accumulation of this junk is a big problem. There needs to be a way found to essentially go into these cells and eradicate this junk every once in a while so that it doesn't impede the functionality of the cells. So here are the seven causes. We already know what the problem is. We have a basic outline, and from that, plans of attack have been developed by Dr. DeGray and others. So this is an extremely promising field, and hopefully we will have some breakthroughs in it within the next few years and within the next few decades as well.